FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Yesterday we made mention when we were speaking uh, with uh, Missouri Torch uh, editor Dwayne Lester about some issues uh, concerning Missouri Real ID and as well as the tax cut which passed Missouri State Legislature but was vetoed by Missouri Governor Jay Nixon who just hates it when Missourians get to keep more of their own cash money apparently. And I was wondering why or perhaps when Missouri Republicans were going to override Nixon's veto on that tax cut. And joining me right now is Missouri Missouri House Speaker Tim Jones. Good afternoon to you, sir. Dana, great to talk to you again. Thanks for having me of on. Of course. Good to, good to have you on. So what is what is happening with this tax cut? Do we have, because uh, we have a majority in our state legislature. So, you know, everyone standing outside of the Capitol building is looking at this issue and we're all saying, okay, well, it seems you know simple enough. Let's just override the governor's veto. So what's stopping that? Dana, I, I, and I wish it were so easy. I, I voted for the tax cut bill. Not once, not twice, but three times uh, during session. And if I could override the governor on his 29 vetoes this year on every single bill, I would love to do that. And we're going to try to override him on as many as possible. The veto session is on a very historic day this year. It's on the third or second Wednesday, or second Wednesday of every September. So this year, it's on September the 11th. So everyone Ooh. needs to mark their calendars. September the 11th, please come to Jefferson City or stream us online. Listen to all the action. It's going to be a very exciting year. Dana, we we had my my concern, and I I know I made some news yesterday because, well, I went on on the enemy. I I went on some public radio stations yesterday, (laughs) and the liberals jumped. You know, anytime you don't, anytime there's a little crack, they love to exploit it and call you a loser and all that. And I said, look, it's going to be hard to override this bill. And so they took that to mean, well, I just gave up and raised the white flag. I was... They, they took the bait hook, line, and sinker because all summer long, Jay Nixon has been flying around on his taxpayer-funded brand-new $6 million airplane bashing us about giving Missourians more money, you know, God forbid, mm. and he's got the education establishment on his side on this. So I've got a lot of members under a lot of stress. I needed help from the grassroots, and to your credit, you were the first one to jump on this and call me up, and I'm so glad you did because I need the help of you and all your listeners to put pressure on all their state representatives because I need a lot of help on this bill. The first time around, it got 100 Republican votes out of the 109 that we have. Some people were missing that day because it was late on a Thursday. Three Republicans voted against it. I also had three Democrats, Dana, that voted for the bill. One of them is one of your favorites, Jeff Rorta from Jefferson oh, County. Oh, I'm shocked. Did so, he? Dana, uh, wow. you may have heard this. He wants to be in our state Senate more than he can taste it. Missourians need to start blowing up his phone and his email inbox and ask Jeff Rorta, where is he going to be September 11th? Is he going to show up in the state capitol and vote yes for the override and vote yes to keep more money in Missourians' pockets, or is he going to go with his governor? There's another representative in this listening audience area up in Lincoln County, Representative Ed Schieffer. Ed Schieffer is a Democrat. He voted yes. He wants to be in the state Senate. There are two Democrats, Dana, that could help me out a ton on making this a little bit easier. In addition to that, Dana, I need I need all 109 of my Republicans. And I've got Republicans that are in 42% Republican districts all the way up to 72% Republican districts. Easy vote for the people in the easy Republican districts. Some of the harder districts, they're under a lot of pressure. They're being hammered by their superintendents and their educrats. They're saying it's going to be the end of the public education system if we vote for this bill because we're going to take all the money out of, out of our government-run public schools. Dana, that's hogwash. The governor is spreading misrepresentations and and lies all across the state this summer on your dime in his brand new airplane saying how this is the worst thing ever Republicans could have passed. Dana, we need to keep up with our eight competitive bordering states and with the governors that are reducing taxes and moving to -to right-to-work status and growing their economies and increasing jobs. And one way you do it is you cut taxes. You put money back into the pockets of the people who are creating jobs so they'll create more jobs and grow their businesses further. I hope we override this veto, but I need a lot of help. And so I'm glad that there's some attention being paid to the folks who can make that happen. And that's the 109 Republicans in the House 
and the three Democrats that voted yes during session. What districts are the three uh, or that were, you had well, actually nine? We had what 100. You said 100 Republican who vo- voted for it. Three GOP voted against it. Who are the three Republicans who voted against it? Uh, we had uh, three Republicans, Representatives Hampton, Gannon and uh, Fowler. They're all in southeast Missouri. Dana, the easiest way that people can research this and look into who voted which way in their area of the state, go to the House website, Mm -hmm. house.mo.gov, put in House Bill 253. Everything about the bill will come up, including the vote history. So all you have to do is go to house.mo.gov, put in House Bill 253, find out how your representative voted. If they voted yes, please still call them and urge them to maintain their yes vote because – we are really – the pressure on this, Dana, is like nothing I've ever seen. I've never seen a governor spend all summer long, fly around the state, right, and right. use all his time bashing oh, a Republican bill. It's disingenuous. Well, so it seems in, in not only in putting – well, I, and I know I think it's kind of interesting, Jeff Ward, of all people, being for a tax cut. I don't like the idea of him being in the Senate, but that's just me. But I also understand that – you know, certain strategies and going forward. But it seems as though we need a lot of pressure on these three Republicans as well, because, you know, it, it makes no sense to have Republicans like these in office to have a Republican majority and then Republicans don't get to implement their agenda because you have these three folks voting against it because they're more terrified about their reelection chances than they are about actually representing the people. Dana, you're right. There's a lot of issues where we can argue around the edges and say right. one one strategy is better than another, education reform. You know, we, we've talked about labor issues before, and even though I want to go right to work, there's a lot of Republicans that are in those tough union areas. But, Dana, cutting taxes, reducing the size and scope of government, and giving taxpayer money back to the people that have earned it, that's that's the Republican wheelhouse. If we can't stand for that, then you have to wonder what's the point of having the supermajority. This is right. this is the litmus test vote. There's no reason anyone should vote any way on this other than yes, if you're in the 109. But I need everybody in those local areas to call their rep, find out if they're going to maintain their yes vote, and if they were absent that day or if they were a no, find out if they're going to be a yes, because this is the philosophical underpinning of our entire party. And it's what we stand for. Oh, absolutely. And I think it would it, it would imperil chances of a continued Republican majority in Jefferson City if it does if this veto isn't overridden. You're, you're right, Dan. You're 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 asking for um, another more pro tax reform Republican or even a conservative Democrat to come up and say, hey, I would have I would have voted for the veto over. it. I believe in returning taxpayer right. money back to taxpayers. And, Dana, all the lies and the misrepresentations that are being floated by Governor Nixon are really just that. This bill is nothing is, is going to do nothing to harm the resources for those who truly need it. It's not going to harm the education system. In fact, Dana, it's going to grow our economy. And if we don't do this, if we don't do this, I have to ask Governor Nixon, what is his plan? Because so far his plan has been to bash this bill and not talk about the fact that Missouri is 47th in the nation in GDP growth over the last decade. And during that decade, Governor Nixon has been in office now for over half that time. Mm. And if we're not going to cut taxes to encourage more businesses to grow and to come to our state, what are we going to do? What is his economic development plan? More giveaways and tax credits, more crony capitalism, more special favors for campaign donors. I mean, that doesn't seem to be a plan. That seems to be that seems to be more of the same. So let's do what the governors in Texas And Wisconsin Mm -hmm. and Ohio and Florida are doing. They're cutting taxes. They're reducing the size and scope of government. So we have more spending on the private sector and less on welfare and entitlements. Right. Absolutely. Missouri House Speaker Tim Jones. Well, we will uh, compile a very easy way for folks to get a hold of uh, these elected officials and uh, get this veto overridden. Thank you much. And uh, we, I know we'll be talking to you again uh, by or before September in that uh, veto session. Thank Dana, you. Dana, I'd love to give you an update in the next few weeks. And people can follow me on Twitter at Speaker Tim Jones. And let's vote for some economic freedom in our state. It's long overdue. Perfect. Thank you so much. Speaker Jones, take care. Thank you.